Imam Wallace Dean Muhammad lives modestly here in Chicago. He became the head of the Nation of Islam when his father, Elijah Muhammad, died in 1975. Wallace Dean persuaded most of the nation to adopt mainstream Islam, and he changed the nation's name to the World Community of Islam in the West. There were some very startling mm -hmm. ideas that mm -hmm. uh, the oh, Nation yeah. of Islam had. Yes. I mean, tell us about some it of the It was a myth, a myth to destroy. We had a myth of the, of the origins of the white race as the grafted devil of the black man, you know. That's mind blowing, you know. We don't... And the, the black people were, <laughs> and black people were gods, and the whites were devils. Is saying exactly, exactly. But what made you break with the Nation of Islam then? It right? didn't. It didn't take nothing but a child's brain for me to do that. I was about eleven or twelve when I decided that that was wrong. Then you became a Sunni Muslim. Well, I don't make a big deal about Sunni and Shia, you know. When you I became left, a mainstream Muslim. You became a mainstream Muslim. Yes, and really, the importance of it how it would affect not only Muslims, but Christians too, uh, was not realized by us in 1975. In what way was it important turning that to mainstream Islam? The black Islam? nationalist movement, as extreme as ours, believing what we believe in the race uh, issue, could make a 180 degree turn and join Muslims of the world, good Christians and other good people of this earth. It's amazing. But when you look from the Middle East or Europe, thinking of America as a, as a bad place to be a, a Muslim, it's mm -hmm. like living in the belly of the beast. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that. How would you say that life is like here for people? Well, we know things have happened to make America appear ugly in the eyes of uh, uh, citizens of this country and the citizens of the world. But if we can see America the beautiful that has advanced against America the ugly successfully, and then I'm sure that we would recognize that uh, America is the most fertile soil we have for establishing our religion and our future for our children, our grandchildren and children to come. And in my journey across America, if I want to find America the beautiful, um, where will I find that? So mm -hmm. What kind of things should I look for? The concept of citizenry, how citizenry is established, um, in the Constitution of the United States based upon the equality of man. And I feel very strongly that the Founding Fathers envisioned a world that would welcome Muslims and others from across the waters, not, just, not only Christians. There seems to be an incredible transformation here. Only 30 years ago, Chicago was the most racially divided city in America. It had a white supremacist movement and a black separatist movement. It saw some of the worst racial violence in the entire country. I'm amazed at what I'm hearing from people like Artemis and Wallace Dean. And it seems Chicago is becoming much more at ease with its own diverse population. It's a rich city where life is improving on many fronts, better public education, calmer race relations, and overall the crime statistics show a big improvement. But there is still a dark side to this city, because even though the city has cracked down and arrested gang leaders, gang violence is getting worse. I've been here for three days and nine people have been killed in gang warfare. Islam has made huge gains in Chicago, which is home to the largest number of African-American Muslims in the U.S. Thirty years ago, they had only one mosque. Today, they have more than 40 to choose from. Now, Islam has a new battle to win, trying to loosen the hold the gangs have on Chicago's south side. This is a brown line train to downtown. I'm heading to the south side to visit the city's first halfway house for Muslim ex-prisoners. Its aim is to provide an alternative to life in the gangs. The man who runs this project has served 12 years for murder. Like many ex-offenders, he converted to Islam in prison. His name is Rafi Peterson. We used to go into Cook County Jail Division yeah. 11, yeah. which is the, like the maximum security. Yeah. And then um, 
we seen so many brothers. We did that for like six years. Mm. And then we seen so many brothers coming home and going right back. Right. We realized that we needed more. The temptation more to fall back in must be must have been very high for a lot of people that you've known. As if you come back and you've got to make money, you've got to make ends meet. Not only that, remember a lot of brothers that convert to Islam in the institution. Yeah. They was other than Islam before institution. So we know that you have to have an environment yeah. for the brothers to get a foothold when they yeah. get out. And so we went to National Housing Service. I said, look, Mike, yeah. I know y'all got some houses boarded yeah. up. Yeah. Can we get one? Right. And he said, I know a, a good one. Yeah. You can have one we're having a lot of problems with. And, you know, we can we But can it was in a it. bad way when Definitely. you first saw this house. There was graffiti everywhere in here. So this was a gang house? There was a gang house. It right. was boarded up, yeah. and the neighbors and stuff was afraid to say anything or right. to even call the police on these guys. The neighborhood is feeling the benefits of this project, but that's not all. It's having a positive impact on those still in prison. Hassan, are you noticing more and more I mean, African Americans coming to Islam, I mean, especially in in prison. They already have it in their cell, but they yeah. need somebody to bring it out of them. Mm. So then, once they see it, then they might say, oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. This halfway house is a calm center in a neighborhood torn up by gang violence. And Rafi is not content to let murder and mayhem thrive on his doorstep. There was a killing right here in this alley right here. And Where? Pull it right here. About a year ago, they dropped a the brother right here, mm -hmm. and they shot him in the head. Mm -hmm. This is a very uh, heavily drug-infested area. Up this street here, they say it's 88,000 young people between the ages of 8 to 25 in this general area that we live in, West Long. It's artesian now. Down this street, I don't want to go down there, especially with the camera in the car. Yeah. There have been several murders on side. If you look down the street, the street looked like a yeah. ghost town. Mm -hmm. See all the houses boarded up. Yeah. Same thing down this way. Campbell, heavily drug infested also. They had a killing on him, 63rd. I wanted to take you up 63rd Street. I mean, you're living right in the heart of it. So you still know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. they, they accept us. You know, they know a lot of the brothers, even a lot of the brothers in the tribes, mm -hmm. they don't like what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but they know I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah. Two weeks ago, they killed the brother. See where them guys at right there? That's the store that they broke in on the corner. Yeah. They shot that place up. The one thing that they did when they locked up all of the real gang chiefs in Chicago, they destabilized all of the gangs. Now, there's no one individual you can come to like you used to back in the day and say, man, and he got control of a whole area. Yeah. It's a matter of survival. I mean, they got to do what they got to do to survive. I don't knock them, you know, because yeah. I understand where they're at. My thing is, if you want to turn people away, you got to turn them towards something. Yeah. And of course, what Rafi is trying to turn this neighborhood towards is Islam. What do you think, Rafi, here in Chicago, what do you think is Islam's place in America? I mean, is it a growing one? Has it got a healthy future? Or, or not? I think that Islam can be the cure to America ills if it's openly accepted. Islam can knock down barriers because we, as Muslims, we're supposed to be the best for humanity. And I think Islam in America has opportunity to really teach and show that that's what we are and that's what we can be. I have to admit, I've come to America with my own prejudices and misconceptions. I thought that being Muslim in America was a story of widespread fear, discrimination and stereotyping. But in the short time I've been here, what I'm hearing from Muslims is about opportunity, constitutional rights and due process, about having a stake in this country and being made to feel that they belong. And as I travel across America, what I want to find out is whether these ideas define not only what it means to be a Muslim in America, but what it actually means to be an American Muslim. And I'm getting the message that a great deal of what it means to be an American Muslim is understanding your constitutional rights and how you go about being a good citizen. And it's in Washington, the nation's capital, where I'm hoping to learn about citizenship, the law of the land, and the influence of Islam. 
You know, hardly anyone would credit the current American leadership with having much knowledge of Islam's history, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, in something that would come as a huge surprise to most of us, amongst the founding fathers, one of the greatest, Thomas Jefferson, had his own Quran in full acknowledgement of Islam's contribution to world civilization. And one of the most famous monuments in the American capital over there is dedicated to him. A big part of the legacy of Thomas Jefferson and the Founding Fathers is freedom of expression. It means a lot to Americans, including American Muslims. One of the most radical ways you can indulge this freedom is on stage through comedy.